And we're back for our final segment with David McKinley, Mike Oliveri, running for the first congressional seat in West Virginia. Thanks for being with us. Mike, I want to, you know, in your campaign, now, what's interesting to me is you ran a campaign that was based on being against Mr. Mullahan. I mean, your, your campaign commercials were really targeted at him. Uh, many people thought they were negative. As you go into this next phase of the general election, do you see yourselves, yourself talking more about Mr. McKinley, or do you see yourself talking more about your positions and, and what West Virginia needs to move forward? All of our campaign commercials will be fact-based. They will be based on a set of facts, and that's the way we operated during the primary, and that's the way we'll operate in the general. Uh, when you set out a set of facts, some can look at those and consider them negative ads, but they're factual, and that's, that's what our ads were about. We ran some ads that clearly would be called compar comparable, where we compared things I had done and things uh, the congressman had done. So uh, I don't feel as if we ran a negative campaign. I think we, we put facts before the voters uh, through public opinion and let them make a decision, and certainly we'll continue to do that. We hope in a longer stretch, you know, we have a little bit more time than the sprint of a primary. You hope to have a little bit more time to articulate some of the issues that are most important to you uh, and give the voters an opportunity to maybe better get to know uh, who you are and what you stand for. So clearly that's, uh, that will be our campaign. Is it easier running against someone like Congressman Mullahan uh, than it is run when you have two people that are coming, seeking the office? Is it, is it easier working against somebody that's part of Congress and, and in effect out of favor with the public? Well, I don't know if it's easier or harder. I'll say this, it's an honor to run, to be able to stand before people and offer the reasons why you think you should have a chance to lead them. And it's a pleasure to run. And, and you get to meet folks uh, across the district. And so uh, clearly there were some advantages for us in the primary, given the disfavor with Congress in general, uh, that, uh, that in the general will be different. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to work hard. We're going to ask each and every individual we come in contact with for, for their consideration. All right. David, you certainly were involved in, in a, a rough and tumble campaign up there. And everybody was running ads, accusing people of stuff. And I wonder if you're going to see yourself running the same kind of campaign uh, against Mr. Oliverio, or, or are you going to take a different approach? Well, I just heard it. It's a potential is going to go negative, so I, I guess I'm going to say we're going to match. I see. <laughs> fact that, so I'm going to match, match him with factual ads, apparently. So we'll just see what happens with it. it we've known each other for a long time, and, and uh, uh, but I, I just want to stay focused on the jobs. That's what people want in West Virginia is jobs. We've got to get to a way to make people understand how you do that in the private sector because most people aren't employed. Employers. And we have to be able to express that very clearly for the hundreds of jobs that we've created. What does it take? How do you get government out of the way so that we in the private sector can hire? Because if we hire those individuals, we're going to be fine. This country will be fine. I, you just said something. You, you said you want to create jobs in the private sector. The stimulus money has been more aimed at creating jobs in the public sector. And we all know that sustainable jobs and wealth are always created in the public sector. What private. specific, or, I'm sorry, in the private sector, <laughs> I've been in West Virginia too long. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to <laughs> how, how long, how would you go about doing that? Well, first, I'd, no more stimulus packages. This one is 787, almost $800 billion, and only 7% of that went for jobs. The rest of it was pushing ideology. That's not what we need. We've got to find ways to... It, the stimulus is, did not create the jobs we were looking for. If they had taken that money in some way and moved the regulatory reform, moved on tort reform, moved on some other areas so that the private sector can come back, that's the solution. The government can't buy its way out of a recession. We've known that. The history is replete with that. Oh, we, just stay out of our way. 
let us do the job. Make sure that you're, you do have certain levels of regulatory so that people aren't abused, much like in the mining situation or whatever it is. There's, there are responsibilities for checks and balance. But that's really what we're talking about here is how we move it. In this campaign, I think that's where it's going to come down to, is who's going to provide the check and balance to the Obama administration? He's run roughshod for two years, and there's been no checks and balance. I know that we can provide that check and balance to it. Okay, I want to go back to the original question uh, that I asked earlier, and I, and I interrupted myself. Would you rather be running against Senator Mullahan with all of the, uh, um, Senator, how about Congressman Mullahan with all of the uh, negatives that he had versus Mr. Oliverio? From the very beginning, I've said it repeatedly to any time we've had these opportunities or these interviews. That's not the, I didn't care who we ran against because what we were talking about was whether we're going to elect someone that's going to support Nancy Pelosi, we're going to run as a referendum on the Obama administration and what effect it's had on this country, and it hasn't been positive, and we're going to run a campaign that talks about a checks and balance. We have to have a checks and balance. You can't have one party in control of both the House and the Senate and the executive office. They, it, it, it hasn't worked. And we've seen it for two years. We're going to be, I think, the House is going to be secured by the Republicans. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to finally be in, there, in, a, in a majority for a change. All right, Mike. I, I think to, you know, to take off on that, you know, I think you could simply ask, has Mike Oliverio been a checks and balance on Governor Caperton, Governor Underwood, Governor Wise, Governor Manchin? Absolutely. You know, I've stood up to governors. Senate presidents, House speakers, and articulated what was important to my constituents. That won't change a bit. If I get an opportunity to serve in Washington, I'll be that checks and balance that the uh, people in Northern West Virginia need. All right. David, I want to ask you, 54%, I, I went to the Secretary of State's office on Friday, 54% of the people of West, or the people of the first district who voted, voted against a combination of candidates against you and Mr. Oliveria. 54% are still up there now that need to be convinced. What is it you're going to say to them? You've got about 15 seconds to tell me. What are you going to tell, me, what are you going to, tell them to, to vote for you? We're going to make sure that their, their neighbors and their friends are going to find ways that we're going to try to create an atmosphere that they can have jobs again. This is, this is wrong to be pushing ideology when our people need jobs. All right. Mike, what are you going to tell those 54% to get them to come your way? We're going to continue to preach our message of fiscal responsibility. A government can't spend more than it brings in, and we're going to continue to talk about the integrity that's needed in Washington today. All right. Well, it's going to be a very interesting campaign. It's probably the most wide-open campaign in recent West Virginia history for an important federal office. And we look forward to having both of you all back on, not only the decision makers, but on our debates. Uh, and thank you very, very much, both of you, for joining us. And congratulations on an outstanding victory. We'll be back with a final word after this.